I failed you all, and more importantly, I have failed Ohm. Yesterday there was no power, and as much as I tried cranking it, uh, the hand crank for my PC, that is, it didn't, it, it didn't work. I just couldn't do it. To go an entire 24 hours, well, longer at this stage without Ohm is, it's unforgivable. So to make it up to you all, I'm going to have an 11 year old shank a mechanoid cluster. Ah, there they are now. Boris Jorison, welcome. Welcome. Uh, this child happens to have a weapon that does uh, several thousand DPS. So I think this child will probably be fine. Holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs> well, this is up to a great start. I couldn't be happier. The knives were a resounding success. Oh, I should say shivs, of course. They're not quite, not quite that well refined. Jorison. Oh, come on. The 11-year-old child apparently got disarmed. Maybe maybe literally. Oh, no, just the pain. Just in severe pain. You fucking coward. What the hell's the point of having a child if they're not going to get out there and fight on the front lines? <laughs> it's like one hit to kill these turrets. It's so good. Holy crap. Wow, I'm genuinely very impressed by this. Go on, then. Take out the smoke spewer. That'll, that'll probably do it. I cannot wait. And I, you know what? I hope. Ooh, ooh, what? fucking timing do you call this? I hope and I pray that those beta poly knights turn up again. Because at this stage, I think we are unstoppable. I think we're untouchable. And I'm gonna go and I'm gonna go and stab Void. So to reiterate, welcome once again to the final chapters of Ohm and His Colony. We have a very tiny amount of research left to go before we have done it. We have ascended this colony from cave people thinking in a corner to full-on masters of, of, of destiny, of well, everything, really. Matter, energy. We have a very small amount left to go. We, ha we have one research... Thank you for that. We have one research specifically that will unlock the very, very final things. These final things range from ridiculously overpowered drugs to ridiculously overpowered armor to uh, the Eternium, the item that we had a very, very long time ago. Remember, we got that random longsword drop from an enemy raid that, does that makes our current knives look pathetic. What I've just noticed and what I'm most interested in this here... Oh, there are cosmic bionics beyond even what we've got right now. Well, that's pretty insane. It's worth mentioning as well. These bionics are really, really good. Not because they are as efficient as the cybernetic stuff, but because they give a health bonus, which is something we've only got with the uh, uh, with the evolved organs one. Let me go to, uh, I think Arcadius has one, right? 350% extra hit points. So if we upgrade everybody with that, our people are going to be, even if, let's say we send Arcadius to Raid Void again and his armor breaks, which I think is unlikely, but if it does, he is still going to be so difficult to kill. Now, I've done a couple of things in between episodes. The first one is trying to up our production of Arco Mass and Arco Fragments so that we can actually get around to turning the base into a proper Arco Colony, something I talked about quite a while ago. But we've got kind of so many different aesthetics from so many different eras. We have the first Pebble Houses. We ever built the Copper buildings from our kind of steampunk era. We've got the Antimatter Walls from when we hit Ultratech. I would love to get almost all of it upgraded to Arco Matter. And then right on cue there to get, of course, the final research, we need five extremely rare, very expensive components we can only buy from traders. I have increased the duration of traders uh, because, well, I mean, by which I mean I put up some flyers and I said, hey, come trade with us because we've got everything you could ever need. I mean, literally, we can make whatever it is they need. And I think it makes sense that ships would flock across the galaxy to come and trade with a colony who can make anything. So thematically, it's absolutely fine. And as a result, we should get a lot more, as you can see here, a lot more trade ships than we were getting before. Uh, even then, the bionic, uh, sorry, not the bionics, the uh, components are some incredibly rare. We're probably going to be here for quite a while still, unfortunately. Yeah, nothing in this one. They've got, whoa, the godly cell crafters are 344,000 apiece. I mean, they are very, very good. Don't get me wrong. I really do like the cosmic components as a balancing mechanic. It, it, it stopped us dead in our tracks. It's something you have to work on pretty much the entire game leading up to this point. It was the perfect series for it. And then those freaking Vikings turned up and stole all my components. If I'd have realized how important they were at the time, I'd have probably built some sort of incredible vault. In fact, if we've got anything we want to put in a vault right now on the subject of that. Comrade Lubricants, are you the chosen one? No, no, they are not. Green Eel. Maybe Green Eel. I know they're a combat supplier, but I can't not check at this point, huh? With the exception of a Beta Poly Warhammer, absolutely nothing of note. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. 
it might not be what we're looking for, but I know someone who's going to be extremely happy with that. Wait, is that it by Void? <laughs> I love the only thing we've got from Void this entire playthrough. It's a super seducer implant. That is so good. Avalon won't be the only beaver being put in the hospital. <laughs> oh, now that's a fair point. Because we've... Uh, because there are more trade ships, and that's definitely nothing I've done, of course. They are events, so the chance of changing the storyteller is massive now. I mean, it was only 5% chance before or whatever, but if we're getting five trade ships a day... That's pretty huge. About about 25% for those who keep in track. Oh, and it's Void. You know what? At this stage, at this stage with our knives, bring it on. I've been checking all of them. Animal traders, farming traders. This one's mining goods. I, I feel like there's no point unless it is exhausted goods trader. So we'll just ignore it until they pop up. Ah, we've also got 2,300 Arco fragments at this point. All right, might have gone a little bit too hard on that. Although... It's two fragments per wall, and we've got a lot of walls to change. And I'm probably going to build the floors as well. That is every single wall in this base carefully drawn around to preserve it for history, of course. To be replaced with the Arcotech walls. And this is going to take a very, very, very long time. Because they also take a long time to actually build. What I didn't realize is they are also absolutely tough as nails. That's, uh, was that like a million hit points per wall? I wasn't originally going to replace the outer walls as well. I quite like the idea of the kind of green and purple, but... I mean, shit, in hindsight, we might as well. Ah, and of course, Smelly and Magic Baby. Wait, what? Smelly and Brig Lebowski are no longer in a relationship? She broke up with Brig Lebowski to get with Magic Baby? Oh, they've actually got one. Look, Beckoning of Desire, Cosmic Component 3 of 5. 29,000. Now, this is also... Whoa, what is that? Uh, difficulty level times 1.2. Wowee. Just for playing on Merciless, all the prices are jacked up 20%. That is one of what we need. That is that is one of the five. And that came from a random trade caravan too that we're now allied with. What, because I spent that much money? Oh. Well, hopefully Om will deliver that straight to the Cosmic Multi-Analyzer. If not, when they're done with the walls, it actually might not be a terrible idea to build a vault. In fact, why don't we just put them in here? That way, I mean, look, if we put like, uh... We put five separate stockpile zones here. I realized that the voice storyteller doesn't actually send traders. So the fact that we've had some visitors and then this swapped over to Phoebe Chillax, that's very good. It is pretty high tier for our goal of trying to get the components, right? But because I do love a bit of the old ultra violence, so I decided to send a tiny child with a knife to go and teach the Empire a lesson. Ooh, and I sent him with cocktails too, because I mean, well, I'm not going to send a child with a knife without getting a few drinks in there. <laughs> Um, I'm sorry? Your caravan has been lost. The following people and animals have been lost with it. Boris Jorison. Oh, no. Did the cocktail... Did the cocktail make him pass out? They wouldn't have gone through the armor, let's be honest. 200% across the board, fully covered with a shield generator built in. A shield generator which has like a thousand points. There's no way they would have immediately dropped him like that. It's ridiculous. Arcades walked into a, in, into a void settlement and didn't take any damage. I think I might have just... I think I might have just sent a drunk child to their death. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, okay? I didn't mean to get anyone killed. I just thought it would be really, really funny and really embarrassing for the Empire if a drunk child with a knife took down their strongest cataphract. Who's child? Was that Arcadius's child? Oh, no. Hang on. Uh, social tab. Uh, okay. Hanky Pank. Dimos. Oh, yeah, I do remember that. Oh, yeah, good luck trying to find it in this bloody family tree. Boris Jorison Lebowski, the second chickeny pank Dimos, was... <laughs> Firstly, a terrible name. That was Brig Lebowski's son, then. Oh, Brig, I'm so sorry. Or daughter. I meant daughter. It's a Boris is a unisex name. Cheated on by Smelly. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, no. Uh, I know I've said this a lot before, but our base quite literally covers... More or less the entire map at this stage. So the chance of us avoiding anything this time is very, very slim. And um, 
the first meteor is dropping right, right there. Uh, let's get everybody indoors. We do have Arco Tech walls for the most part at this stage. All of you go in Arcadius' is Love Shack. Okay, it's all falling in the same place by the looks of it. We should be fine. Oh, Penny almost got... <laughs> Penny almost got peppered. Could you imagine? Episode whatever we're on right now. Ohm gets killed by a single block of steel that fell from the sky. What a plot twist. That would really subvert expectations. Ah, oh, there it is. Number five, Amplifier of Ambition. 47,000. Good lord. The worst part is, as rare as they are, I bet you can get duplicates. Two-fifths of the way there, though. Oh, another child. Wow, this light in the game is, uh, it's pretty insane. Smarty. Smelly's child, Smarty. Hello, Smarty. Whose child are you? Tycho Smarty Lebowski, the second chicken Epang Dimos. Fucking what a name. Oh, Brig Lebowski had another child to replace the one that I got drunk and kidnapped. <laughs> so they must have had that child before before Smelly left the situation. Let's get, like, get back together. I can't keep track of what's going on at this stage. Too focused on all this, all, all, all this crap up here. Notorious Incorporated. You've done it. That is part number four. Well, I mean, that's part number number four, but that's the third one that we've got. Oh, three of five. I've already got three of five. I'm going to buy it anyway. I'll build another one. Any that we have left over, I'm going to turn them into EMC. And I'm going to turn that EMC into... Actually... Hang on. A... Hang on a second. Cosmic car... Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, if we could just make it, that would be... Well, hang on. They're not called Cosmic Component, though, are they? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Number. Oh. Well, there we go. That's answered that question. Thank God. I was about to say, if we were just able to craft them for the past two and a half episodes, that really would have wasted a, a lot of my time. Oh, two lots of new lovers as well. I would have preferred two lots of Cosmic Components, but that's okay. Pro and Brig Lebowski. That's uh, Crow, Cuba, Viving, Gravy, Plasma. Daughter of uh, Captain Cuba Viving Gravy Plasma. Please, please don't have children. <laughs> These names. And then Corrupt. Corrupt the second Chickeny Pank Dimos and whoever the other person was that I've already lost track of. Bons Bons Sabat. That's a nice simple one. Wife. Wife second cousin. Lover. Grand niece. It's it worse the more you go down the list. Oh! Forbidden knowledge, two of five. Oh, we will be so unstoppable. And we have some really nice carpets. Oh, goodbye, Phoebe. Please don't be void. We need these trade ships. It's Randall. Randall might end up sending away more trade ships. I'm not entirely sure whether the storyteller would take precedent over the mod at this point. Well, either way, we've also got a Glitter World Trader. Ohm, Beckoning of Desire. We've already got that one. I mean, I still bought it, but we really really did not need it. I thought there was. Psychic emitter. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry, Bambi. Who gave these gazelle a psychic emitter? Oh, no. The time it's taken five exotic goods traders to come and go. They've built a really tacky floor. They haven't even finished the bloody tacky floor yet. Ohm, chat with this man. North Partners. This is it. Number one cosmic component, and I am free. <gasps> He's only gone and done it. There it is. Fracture of greatness. Could you imagine if they botched the construction now? You would you would watch me cry. This would just be the re the remainder of this episode would be 15 minutes of me crying. Lock that door. No one else gets in. And um, you don't leave until it's done. Yeah. It's glorious. Such sublime beauty. Grace beyond everything else. But that's probably enough about home. I mean, this thing's not bad either, eh? Look at that. Oh my god, it uses 100,000 watts. <laughs> of course it does. But now, now, look at this. Genuinely thought it said uh, breeding the limits then, which is, well, I mean, quite on brand for the series in hindsight. Peering beyond the veil, it is 125,000... Yeah, one, <laughs> 125,000 points of research, and that will unlock the Enigmatic Lance, which is a turret, and we also have the Rift Fabricator. And this is the this is the only one we can say, right? It wasn't like we got unlucky. Right, we take that one. 
So, Pyramid Beyond the Veil, then Breaching the Limits, then it opens up again. Is that not going to take, like, an insane amount of time, though? Uh, no. <laughs> no, no, not really. Well, that was surprisingly straightforward. There is still something out there. Something eternal and invisible we have yet to grasp onto. It's called YouTube monetization. <laughs> so this unlock Oh, this unlocks Eternium. Uh, it probably doesn't unlock the Eternium. Oh, no, no. There you go. We should be able to call it from the Call of the Cosmos. So the Call of the Cosmos right now, I think, just lets us get all the other crap we've been able to get so far. Tell you what, let's, let's queue that up and have Owen working on it. Because it's 150,000. Granted, it'll take home all about 15 minutes. And let's throw it down. I took away all the drills, too, because these things are crazy fast for churning out resources. So we really didn't need it. Let's put that thing down then as soon as possible. There it is. Rift Fabricator. Whoa, those are cool. I'm going to throw down a couple of these back to back. If I can rotate it. There we go. Because I'm fairly certain I read something in the tooltip about having a linkable to help speed things up. Ideally, if we've got enough uh, components, which we do, we'll just throw one of these down on it. Oh, what do you mean? Oh, you just put in work and it makes whatever the hell you want. Decadent meals. We can get all sorts of medicines. Oh, wow. This is, this is insane. I just cannot believe that they would add a machine to this game where you could fabricate whatever the hell you wanted at seemingly no cost. <laughs> if you listen very, very closely, you can hear the sound of the uh, the game balance getting further and further away. But this is the power of Ohm. This is, this is why he started the way he did, because he was just too powerful. So this actually does everything. Oh my god, you just pattern resurrect and make serums. That's insane. So we might as well just get rid of these. Ah, oh, there we go. Well, in the time it took them to build the two Rift Fabricators, Ohm has finished the next one. So this allows us to actually draw the Eternium now. Which means all of these very fancy purple ships that we've got are outclassed. Hedonist food. Well, that sounds pretty good. Uh, Project Eternals is for all of the ridiculous... Are, are these actually that good? 300% body part efficiency. Yeah, I'd, I'd argue that's fairly all right. Onto the Zenith. Cosmic Observer. Oh, telescope study. Right, it's a really, really powerful form of recreation. Enigmatic computer and a pattern transmission unit. A massive arcane television fit for a theater. Wow, 250% right power. Good lord. Really, we could do with, uh, with some sort of energy. And I assume that's what this thing does? Oh, this might actually allow us to build... Yeah, that's probably what, um, that's probably the link bullet was talking about before. Yeah, the, uh, the energy generation would be a lot nicer at this point. Yeah, no, for sure. Holy crap. Let's just get it out the way. Let's just get one of them out the way and move on. I, I think, honestly, the, uh... I think let's go for this one to kick things off. And then I'm also going to turn this one off. That would just about equalize our power usage. And then we'll go ahead and build a cell crafter as well. So in theory, at this stage, we get rid of our... Uh, we get rid of this thing here, which is crafting advanced components and regular components. We could get away... We, we could basically get rid of all of our drills as well, depending on how fast this thing is. The ability to pattern new training means we could get rid of all of the Rimmerfeller stuff, because that's basically all that's been doing for us. Oh, shit. I mean, we cut the middleman and just straight and make medicine. Nice. There we go. That's got to be the link ball, right? Not that I think we would need to speed things up at all, to be honest. Yeah, there we go. Advanced Rift creation. Rift secondary latch point. Oh, it's another connector. Wow. That one's also only 50k. Is, is there another form of power generation? Project Embers? Cosmic Reactor Generation Omega. That sounds that sounds pretty much what I'm after. More like Generation Ohm Mega. Holy shit, it's not blisteringly fast. Wow, that's a strange turn of pace, isn't it? We are drawing Cosmic Medicine from thin air. It's 24,000 work. Holy crap. You know, I'm not sure whether or not the cell crafters actually benefit from all of the uh, all of the linkables and things like that. The Eternium is 90,000 work. I've got to see how that stacks up to Z Composite, because that might be way too slow otherwise. Eternium is only 4,000. Wait, wasn't Z Composite like crazy expensive by comparison. Uh, yeah. Yeah, like a factor of 100 bigger. Okay, so Eternium. Oh, shit, that's actually quite cheap. Holy crap, that is fast to produce. Oh, God. Project Room Factor Insanity plus this is, um... Wow, it's like way out of control. That is insane. And this stuff, holy shit. This stuff makes the Z composite look like a little, little babby, babby stuffable. My god, 
You build things out of it and it makes it five times faster? What the hell? Sharp damage. 1,000%, by the way. I put down the other cell crafter here specifically so that we could have it make some armor out of Eternium because I thought, shit, why the hell not? I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting to get so much though. So in terms of stoppable armor, we could just make, um, I mean, we could just make like that warlord armor out of this. All right, before we do anything else, shiv. You know it has to happen. Uh, let's make one per person again. Oh my god, is it already done? No, no, no. <laughs> that took genuinely two seconds. Oh, that's so good. Hang on. Okay, so let's go like Warlord armor. I've got to get all the other crap for it. I might not even bother because at this point, it's just unnecessary. Stuffable gloves and boots. Yeah, no, that would be, that'd be very, very overpowered. Heavy plate armor. Yeah, I, I like that. At this stage of the game, just return all the way back to the medieval time. Wow. I, I can't believe I'm saying this. The Eternium shivs are are worse. Not like significantly worse, but but worse. But because Eternium is so cheap to produce and, and really quick to craft with, we could queue up like a bunch of uh, draw spears instead, something like that. And those would be better than the Eternium and the Z Composite shivs. But like making Z Composite draw spears is... Just not feasible. So it's not the end of the world. But I'm a lot disappointed that my... My Eternium shifts went a little bit better. <laughs> 1,674. Well, about 1,600 for all the stats on the Z-Composite Warlord armor. Wow, it is legitimately better. Again, this is way more convenient to make. Because you don't need the Thrombo fur and the Patch Leather, etc, etc. I'm kind of surprised by that Z-Composite. Ah, nice work, Erm. I sure hope this armor isn't... Way more powerful than all the stuff I just made. How do we even make it? Uh, char... Char... Ah, oh, here we are. Cosmic armor and Eternium. Oh, I just put all the cosmic armor in the bloody recycling. Well, hang on, hang on. Before I queue it up, is it any good? Uh... Oh, my... <laughs> 2,500% shop. How does that stack up to the Eternium plate? The Eternium plate could be better. You never know. Uh... Eternium plate. Let's go for like an excellent. No. No, it's nowhere near. I I've wasted everyone's time. The gloves and the boots though are still pretty high tier, so we can we can use that. No. No, it covers it covers the feet. So while we wait for this machine to produce extremely overpowered armor at a staggering speed, why not move on to cold hard drugs? What do they even do? Ascendance. Oh, everything. Well, that's good. Uh Hedonia is 17% recreation. That's not bad. Oh, it's always safe, too. That's really, really good. And then Stim X is 100% global work speed, 100% rest, 50% meditation focus. That is insane. 50% consciousness moving tightness. If we can produce this fast enough, you make it out the Utopia device in the Cosmic Manipulator. We could just have them take that once a day. Project Embers. There we are. Might actually be able to turn on this other bloody machine. And we've also got a marriage, too. Major Bomber and Arcadius. Oh, it's not the only thing smoldering because of the because of the embers. Well, that was really bad. So I made some of that incredibly powerful drug, the Stimex. Uh, I made a nice, a nice subtle 100 of them. And then we go new policy, Stimex. I assume it there was no chance of overdose or anything like that. Uh, Stimex. I want to take every. I mean, we need to take it every day, but we need to actually take it, like, every 23 hours rather than every 24, so they keep that rest up to 100%. Otherwise, eventually, it will catch up. Bear in mind that the day will tick over, and then they'll have to actually run over to it. So, I guess I'll say always keep two in your inventory as well, just in case of emergency situations. Oh, and all the crazy armor's done, too. I didn't even notice. Well, there's Project Embers. There can't be much left at this stage, right? Hedonist, Eden, and Overtaker, and then Unto the Zenith, whatever the hell that- Oh, don't tell me there's something else. Don't tell me there's an even more powerful material. Cosmic Reactor Generation Omega. Ohm. Mega. Generates 1.5 million watts. Okay, in that case, fair enough. I'll probably get rid of the old plasma fusion reactor. Wait, they still haven't finished building that bloody Barnic Forge. I queued that up ages ago. I was kind of going to notice it's got 0 out of 15 cosmic alloy in it. Don't worry about that. I think we're a bit beyond having to worry about uh, resources and ingredients for building things. There we are. Enigmatic Barnic Forge. I mean, look, we could upgrade everybody, but 
I honestly feel like it's a little unnecessary. Maybe just like arms and legs, because we've got those spines already in place. What are these here? The shrouds. They give hit points, right? Doesn't provide any benefit over the natural body. It does make the head much more durable. Actually, they're a, they're a pretty good idea for keeping our people alive. Bioplasma fusion reactor. And hello, Cosmic Reactor Generation Omega. I think we've got everything we need for that immediately. We'll swap out the other ones as well, because these are very explosive. I kind of want to build one just to detonate it. Maybe we'll go do that out in the field at some point. Unleash the Exarch. Sounds like a bloody firearm to me. Exarch, Exarch, Exarch. What is that? Enables recipe, make the Exarch. Where, where, where do I make that? Exarch. Uh, yeah, that's... Uh, that's a gun. That's a firearm right there. I'm not sure that they're taking these drugs. Hmm. I'm very suspicious of this stimmick. Where, where is it? Show, show me it. Hang on, just check their inventory. See, there's no drugs in there. There's no drugs there either. Why are you... Uh, okay, let's stock up on... Stimmex, I assume, is, is this one, right? Here. Make sure you've always got two in your inventory. We'll override it. What are they doing? They're just picking them up and throwing them on the floor. Oh, here we are, here we are. Stocking up on Stim X. Okay. You just, I just watched you throw that on the floor. Uh, take the drug. Eat the damn drugs. Hmm. What did that do? On Stim X. Oh, last 30 hours. Okay. So every day is fine. Uh. Why wouldn't they, why wouldn't they pick it up though? They won't take it automatically unless I make them. Hey, five year old, take these drugs. <laughs> She's ready. Load her into a spaceship and launch her at the Empire. Oh, I see we can't afford another Genesis, so why don't we just build a... Well, can we? Oh, yeah, shit, we can. Oh, and we can't even afford the other ships I was going to build anyway. All right, there you go. I've got to ask, can we build walls out of Eternium? Oh, we can. What, what, what are the hit points on that? Only 50,000. That's kind of surprising. I feel like I've really lost control of my life at this point. On to the Zenith. Unlocks a patent de-abstraction device, which is a computer powered by the very fabric of reality. All right. My God, that stim is letting him research fast. He's still got 16 hours left and he just cracked out a 250,000 point research. What the hell am I missing? Oh my God, is it another? Ah, oh Jesus, that's huge. Whoa, that's cool though. Um, what the fuck are we going to put this? I mean, it needs to be connected up to the workbench. Can I just pull all this other stuff apart and just put it in here somewhere? Yeah, no, I genuinely can't get it connected anywhere unless we... Okay, 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 hang on. We can... Throw this down here. Right, and then we'll just put the... We'll just build a new work table. Oh, that's also a fair point. I could build it out of Eternium. <laughs> well, I had to fabricate a little bit of glass with the... EMC sensor, but actually that took no time at all to build. What the hell? Needs enigmatic components. Ah, uh, oh, those are cosmic components, right? Okay, there you go. It's five thousand work. Wow. Either I'm misremembering, or the Basculo Nation survived total nuclear annihilation. It is the Basculo Nation. Oh my God, the armor has an eight thousand five hundred point shield. Magic baby, please give your knife to this child. Tiny child, please stab the raiders. Hello, wolf. Oh, my God. I mean, if they send Smarty Berserk, honestly, I think we'll be fine. Uh, what, though? You're already down. Is it because they are... I mean, it's a five... What sort of five-year-old can't even, can't even fight off an entire tribe of raiders? There's only 81 psychic people. Oh, you pathetic child. Oh, shit. They're going to kidnap the baby. Not another one. I also need to get everybody else out of there fast. Okay, Arcadius, save the child. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, put that put that down. Arcadius, for fuck's sake, get the... What is wrong with you? Stab them. Arcadius, you are seriously embarrassing me right now. Nice. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Okay, Smarty is saved. Rescue. Get Smarty out of there. Nice work. Okay, that was a little bit too close. Turns out child soldiers are just really shit. And finally, we have whatever the hell that thing is. <laughs> research speed plus 1,000%. Uh, is that all we need to move on to the next research? Uh, maybe we need something else plugged in too. Missing blank. 
Yeah, I imagine we probably need the quantum device, the uh, Call of the Cosmos. Oh no, hang on, that's Project Rim Factor, isn't it? Let's build all of these as well, and then and then probably also just a regular multi analyzer too. Turns out it was just the multi analyzer all along. Who could have guessed? What the hell is a bastion of stability? I found myself asking that more and more recently, to be honest with you. The ultimate defensive weapon. Is it a firearm, though? Can I finally build something? Then we have something called the Utopia device. This item is ridiculously powerful and not balanced in the slightest, nor will it ever be. Oh, good. It only consumes 150k watts. Okay. Well, let's take a look. Oh, my God. Look at the research cost. It's 5 million. I think even for Ohm, that might be a bit of a challenge. I mean, it's not going to be that much of a challenge, but it will probably take him... But it will take him a little while. So here we are then, at the peak of Rimworld silliness. Going all the way from nothing. A man building houses out of stones, thinking in a corner, to... I'll be honest, whatever the hell is going on here. Only one research is left. One final thing for us to explore, and I feel like I have to give the game some sort of fighting chance. Hundreds of years of research, a confluence of the most overpowered mods going, more importantly, Arcadius. Let's just crank it. And you know what? If they even so much as put a dent in us at this point, I think I'll be impressed. So tomorrow then, the finale, the end of everything, the ascension, or whatever might happen to the colony. There is very literally nowhere else to go from here. We have one final last ridiculous bout with Omen friends. And that's it. Rimworld 1.2. So tomorrow, let's make this count. Because it's, it's got to be a big one. Thank you all for watching. And let's give a thank you. Well, firstly, also thank you for bearing with me today. I've been playing catch up all day. I'm extremely tired right now. But I couldn't go two days without an episode, right? Because of the whole power cut thing. But I'm, I'm glad what we've achieved here. And I'm very excited to see whatever the hell this will result in. I don't think we actually managed to pull it off in the Robo Daddy series. So this is officially the, the, the ceiling for all the remote series we've ever done at this point. Let's make it count. Thank you to Cash Cow Paypig, Time Waster, Atom, Low Res Quail, Chase, Scary Scurvy, Dirty Mike and the Boys, Dr. Bubba, Mr. Chicote, Jackal31 Bravo, Bunty Shuffler, Roan, Krusty Rhino, Kevin, Sleepy257, Bungo, Dunker, and MJ for their support at the executive producer tiers over on Patreon. Thank you. Thank you for bearing with me as well. I will get the Patreon list updated for tomorrow, assuming they're ready. Again, I haven't been able to check because of the whole lack of power thing. Uh, but hopefully that'll be ready for tomorrow. So if you are missing from that, it will only be another day or so. Thank you as well to Oz, Wizard of, Huntsman, Smirtworm, Mayor, Salakata, Wide Riot, A Good Chunk of Balsa, Sendy, Juniper Berry, Garnuba, Sam Haruni, Anna Aurora, Ever Vigilant One, Lilac, and Cameron as well. 